everyone. Today we're going to be learning how to use the salient menu options to create an exciting mega menu structure, similar to the one seen on the main demo. To start, head on over to the menu section within the WordPress admin. Here I've started by adding a few menu items which will act as the columns in our mega menu. As you can see, we have a bare bones setup and have not utilized any of the salient menu options yet. Let's change that. We're going to open the salient menu options and enable the mega menu field. Now the drop down submenu has turned into a mega menu, which displays horizontally. We're now going to go through each column of the menu from left to right and spice things up. Back in the WordPress admin, we're going to edit our first column to display with an image background that has text overlaid on top. In the example, this column is also slightly larger than the others. Following that, we can set a custom width for this item of 30%. We also want our column to be flush against the mega menu sides without any padding, so we can remove the padding here. Next, we're going to switch to the menu item tab to handle the image. I'm going to select custom for the image type and choose an image that I like. Below, we have some options related to the sizing of the menu item, as well as the positioning for the text. We're going to add a color overlay and also turn it into a fancy gradient by enabling the option titled Fade Overlay to Transparent. Now we can adjust the strength of the overlay by using the opacity options. I'm going to set different values for the default and hover. In the demo, the text is positioned in the top left of the column, so I'll select that in the alignment section. Now it's time to define a height for the menu item. I'll go with 300 pixels and also increase the padding to a little bit higher than the default. Because we want to emphasize this column, I'll also change the typography to display as a heading tag rather than the default font. Now we can save our options and take a look on the front end. I'm happy with these selections, but we also need to add some more text under our main title for this column. This can be handled through the core WordPress description field available on every menu item. If you do not see the description field on your end, ensure that the box is checked for it in the screen options tab on the top right corner of the page. Now that we have that enabled, I'll add some sample description text in. Now we've completed the first section and can move on to the second. In the demo, the second column has a slightly different background color than the other two columns. I can replicate that by editing the item and specifying a pale color. The column also does not display a title at the top, so we can remove that as well with the Disable Mega Menu Item Title option. I'm also going to set the column padding of this column to match the padding of the first, which is 35 pixels. OK, the column is ready for the links. Each of the links we're going to add will use an icon aligned to the left. I'm going to add a new menu item as a child of the second column which will act as our first link. Now, I'll open the salient options for this item and head to the icon tab. Here I'll select icons mind for the type and select an icon below. Now I'll specify my desired icon sizing and spacing. Since we want this item to be a little bit more emphasized than a default menu item, I'll switch back into the menu item tab and change the typography to a heading 5. Also, I know that I'm going to want a little more spacing between these icon-based menu items, so I'll add some additional bottom margin here. OK, let's save that and also add in a small description to display under our title. This is looking good. I'll now duplicate this process a few more times to complete the remaining menu items I want for this column. I've skipped ahead after creating some more items and we now have our finished second column. Moving on to the third column, we essentially have two vertical sections, each with their own heading. To handle this we're going to create two menu items that will represent the headings to each section and nest them in our third column. Similar to the last column, this column also won't display the heading at the top, so we can quickly disable that. 
also will ensure that the padding is set to 35 pixels to match the previous two columns. Now all that's left to do is populate our two headings with children of their own. All the child links in this column don't make use of any additional salient menu options, so we can just drag our desired links in and save the changes. Okay, we're almost done. All we have to do for the final column is specify the padding to match the others. Other than that, we can just start adding links as there are no further menu options needed to match our example menu. And we've done it. Our final menu styling is complete and it looks great. I hope that you've been able to learn something from this tutorial. Now it's your turn to go make something using these new menu options. <laughs>